Very good morning. Jai Shri Krishna Guruji. Thank you for joining the Devi Mahatmyam Parayan Day 6. Wishing you all a very happy Navratri once again. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah Om Shri Ganeshaya Namah Om Shri Sarasvataya Namah Om Shri Guru Datatre Namah Om Shri Mahalakshmi Namah Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namah. We'll be continuing the third episode, Meditation on Maha Saraswati. And we will be doing today chapter 8 and 9. So let us begin. Third episode, Meditation on Maha Saraswati. Wielding in her lotus hands the bell, trident, plowshare, conch, pestle, discus, bow and arrow, her luster is like that of a moon shining in autumn sky. She is born from the body of Gauri and is the sustaining base of the three worlds. That Maha Saraswati I worship here who destroyed Shumba and other Asuras. So quick recap. Yesterday we discussed a very important demon called Dhumralochana and also about Chanda and Munda. Chanda and Munda represent lust and greed. So we have understood the whole basis and the foundation of this entire Devi Mahatmyam was one of the reasons why the sage narrated to the king and the Vaishya and what were they afflicted with? The lust and greed alone. They were attached. It all began from attachment which is born out of bondage. And what does what, what is the bondage driving them from? It drives them from the two important demons, lust and greed. And the other one is Dhumralochana. What does he represent? He represents clouded vision or blurred vision. They are not able to see through what is the truth, what is real from unreal. It doesn't allow you, the bondage, the attachments don't allow you at all. So yesterday, the Devi destroyed Dhumralochana and Chanda and Munda. I think we have discussed enough about them. So let us continue and we will come back to them because that is something we have to keep addressing in our lives constantly. So let us begin. Eighth chapter. The sage said, when Chanda was killed and the Asura, Munda was felled and when most of the armies were destroyed, the, the Vailarish Shumba, the lord of the Asuras with mind subjugated by wrath, commanded the marshalling of all Asura armies. I'm actually going to take a small pause here and give an explanation because this is very important for us to understand what is being taught here. When Chanda was killed and the Asura Munda was felled and when most of the armies were destroyed, the Vailaras Shumba, the lord of the Asuras, with mind subjugated by wrath, commanded the marshalling of all Asura armies. So what happens? See, when you try to suppress something within yourself, say, assume you say, okay, now I'm not going to get angry. So I will calm myself. You're consciously trying to make an effort not to get angry. Now, what happens at that point in time? It's very simple. When you, when you force something, you know, when you tell your mind, no, I don't have to, I shouldn't do this. Do you, do you know what happens? The mind puts all its mind in making you get angry. Is it the mind or the demons here? That is what is mentioned here. The mind, with mind subjugated by wrath, commanded the marshalling of all Asura armies. Which means even if you put mighty force in saying I don't want to get angry, there is host of armies which is going to come, that's the Asuric armies, which is going to make you get angry. So don't challenge. Don't say, I will force myself to do something. See, one thing you should understand, nothing happens by force. It all happens by the strength and the power. With the power of knowledge, you cut asunder the ignorance. You destroy the demons. That is what you have to focus on, not by force. You can't force your mind. The moment you try to force your mind, it is going to come, you know, it's going to become a double whammy. It's going to come back to you in full force. And whatever you think you wanted to do, you're going to fail in that. This is a very, this is the very truth of and or the reality. And it is explained here. Why does this happen? Imagine if one 
you know the leader the head of that army of asuras is killed then the armies are there who are going to fight the battle and if they are also killed again then somebody else comes about so what does it tell you it's a constant battle the battle has to be fought continuously you can't just relax and say okay now i have been able to overcome this tendency of mine or this asura i'm never going to get angry the moment you think like this please remember the demon has already awakened and you are actually going to get angry over some stupid or silly thing and it is but very natural this is the this is the truth about life this is the truth about what happens within us and this knowledge will help you understand and recognize when these demons you know try to you know provoke you instigate you into becoming angry at that time with the power of knowledge you have to make conscious effort put lot of effort full force within yourself use all that power that the tools the god given tools the capabilities to control your anger in bhagavad gita lord shri krishna has very beautifully explained he says arjuna it is my conviction that you can control the mind he says that it is lord shri krishna's conviction that you can control the mind what does it tell you control he is not saying you will be able to overcome the mind it's not possible but he is saying you can control the mind that is what you will have to do so even if it is anger lust and greed you know it is it the choice rests with you my guru ji will always say this very powerful lesson you know he he teaches this to everybody he'll say my job is to give you the choice and he says i will give you both the options option a option b and he will give you the pros and cons of both the options but it is for us to make that choice so example tomorrow somebody keeps the bottle of a wine and say please drink are you going to drink are you going to say okay fine nothing will happen i'll just take a small one one peg one one glass of wine it's only a grape juice but it is alcohol at the end of the day but the choice to say no also rests with you right either to say yes or no how easy it is to fall prey to this kind of um, you know enticements in this world people are going to entice you with these kind of things understand recognize them to be the demons in your life these demons come in human form they have within and outside as well so you need to learn to recognize through the power of knowledge when you are always lost in the divine lord when you are serving the purpose of the god and when you take his name chant his name know for sure no evil shall befall you but they are always there to provoke you and put you off the path that is their job but it is the, it is in your hands to make the right decision the right choice that is why the right knowledge is very important then the right tools we were discussing how the devi was given all the weapons the right weapons and using that weapons she fought the battle which is to go in the right direction so when you understand this then when you first have the knowledge and then the second is to application of the knowledge is extremely critical so at that moment in time if your friend says hey one glass you know today is your birthday please drink it's okay fine it's only once in a year we're just having a fun you know it's just a chilling time this is how they talk and what do you think oh my friend is so nice she's just telling for her sake i will drink you know no friend a good friend will never want you to do something wrong but please remember they themselves are in that gutter they will also want you to go in that gutter and if you end up drinking then you have fallen prey for that enticement but if you say no and stand firm you know in your decision and the choice that you make then you win so that is the level of strength we need to have so my guru ji was saying even on the path of spirituality also people need to have that firmness it see it is easy to fall off the path but it is very difficult to have that firmness and to go ahead in the path you know why because the maya the world the material world entices you it's like look at me look at me look at me the object of enticement is always put in front of you my guru ji was teaching a very profound lesson this morning and you know in that he said you know it's very easy to understand the weaknesses that we have as a human being everybody has some weaknesses you know what what happens is we succumb to that weakness when that object of enticement or the object of our weakness comes in front of us 
instead of saying no stop it i you know you have to exercise your control the self control is extremely critical and at that moment if you don't exercise that self control and say no to that object of enticement you will fall prey to that and then what you've gone off the path so where is the question of evolving on the path the guru's job is to test or anybody even in in the world you know when you are doing something good the universe is going to put obstacles when i say universe it's not the universe it's all these demons who don't want you to evolve on the path of goodness so there are going to be obstacles but you have to overcome all of them with the power of the right knowledge and the right tools and you have to fight this war and that is why this knowledge is been imparted to you to understand how to recognize these demons both within and outside as well when i say outside because today people will pull you down in that in that direction so you should not fall prey to the sweet talkers please remember these sweet talkers we we read about the demon called madhu these sweet talkers will entice you you know what hey you are such a great thing they will they will they'll try to make you feel great about yourself they say you know you're so good you know you're you were very capable of you know drinking one whole bottle of beer why don't today we have a competition let's try let's see how much of stamina you have some nonsensical things they try to entice you with or they'll say oh you you know you remember you were the greatest one during your work you could single handedly sell a you know one entire deal you you won a million dollar contract why don't you do this for me today it's a way of talking so that you fall prey for that praise that sweet talkers and you sw- get swayed and do exactly what they want to do they have the ulterior motives so you need to understand recognize these sweet talkers outside as well within is what the mind tries to succumb to these kind of false praises and it loves to hear its praise all the time so you need to be very careful about and that is why my guruji teaches us a very beautiful practice he, he you know the first teaching he gave me when he was uh, when we were when i was learning bhagavad gita under him he said people are going to praise you to heavens when somebody praises you think that they are saying all the bad things about you and when somebody is saying all the bad things about you think they are praising you in such a when when you practice this method you are going to have what is called equanimity of mind so even the praise doesn't affect you somebody saying bad also shouldn't affect you so both should not affect you and what you should practice is called equanimity of mind don't get don't feel elated or don't feel or hurt if somebody is saying bad about you at all doesn't matter please remember they are all talking from their mind and none of this matter at all why should you give importance to what others say that is the most important thing for you to understand know your strengths know your weaknesses work on your weaknesses build on your strengths this is what your focus has to be so with that let us continue now let these 60 86 asuras with all their forces and uplifted weapons and the 84 of kambu clan along with their forces set out for battle let 50 of the koti virya asura families and 100 of the dhaumra families come out by my command likewise let the asura clans kalaka dhaurida maurya and kalikeya hasten and start ready for battle by my command commanding thus shumba the lord of the asuras the cruel despot set out surrounded by thousands of huge armies seeing the that ferocious army advancing chandika filled the space between the earth and the sky with twines of the bow string o king then the line made a very big roar the mother amplified those sounds by the ring of the bell kali who filled the quarters with the noise coming out of a gaping mouth submerged with her terrific roars the twangs of the bow string the roar of the lion and the ring of the bell hearing this noise the infuriated armies of the asuras surrounded the devi lion and kali on all the four directions o king meanwhile for ensuring the destruction of the enemies of gods and the existence of the great gods the forces of brahma shiva guha vishnu and indra possessed of great valor and strength emerged out of their respective forms 
whatever was the form of the godhead whatever his ornaments and vehicle in that very guise his force came to fight the asuras seating on the aerial chariot yoked with swans having the rosary of beads and water pot came the force of brahma she is called brahmini maheshwari came mounted on the bull holding the great trident with the huge serpents for bangles and with the digit of the moon for ornament the mother kaumari came to fight the asuras in the form of guha mounted on the pretty peacock and wielding the lance in her hand likewise vaishnavi the force of vishnu came on the sea seated on garuda with the conch discus mace the bow saranga and the sword in her hands the one who took the incomparable form of vishnu the sacrificial bow she also came as the shakti varahi in a bow like form narasimhi came there as well bearing a similar form to that of narasimha and the constellations of stars were scattered hither and thither whenever she shook her mane seated on the king of elephants with a thunderbolt in hand and possessed of thousand eyes aindri joined the fray she was just like indra thereupon shiva surrounded by those forces of the god stole chandika let the asuras be killed without delay out of love for me then from the body of the goddess emerged a terrific force of chandika roaring frightfully like hundred jackals yelling together she the unvanquished told shiva of the matted smoke hued hair lord please go as a messenger to the presence of shumba and nishumba tell those two arrogant asuras shumba and nishumba and the other asuras that might be present they're ready for the battle let indra get the sovereignty of the triple world let the gods partake the oblations you go to the nether regions if you want to live or else proud of your strength if you desire battle then come all by all means let my jackals feed contentedly on your flesh as the devi employed shiva himself as a messenger she became renowned in this world as shivaduti those great asuras hearing the words of the goddess communicated by shiva were filled with indignation and repaired to the place where katyai katyayani stood what does it mean you know have you observed yourself when your mind is doing something wrong a wrong that is a wrong action you know in the world you have the knowledge that this is right and the wrong you know you should not drink you should not say lies you should always be good you know or when you're trying to um, do some action which is forbidden action now or prohibited action what happens to you your mind on one your you know we say you have a conscience and that conscience tells you please don't do this it's it's we say you know some your inner voice and that inner voice is telling you don't do this action if you do you are going to suffer a subtle voice will tell you but your mind is going to give you reasons no it's only one time it doesn't matter you're just having fun you know you worked really hard how does it matter it's not the wrong thing it's trying it will give you all the reasons to cover that mistake up even if it is a mistake it's never going to show you as a mistake and you know what it will give you reasons it will it will throw a hundred reasons saying your friends do your family you know everybody in the world are doing you're not any it's not anything new that you're going to do it's actually instigating you it's provoking you you're trying to restrain yourself refrain from doing that action you're trying you know you're putting all your restraint possible from holding yourself not from committing that action but what happens your mind you know tries to motivate you at that time motivate you in the wrong direction it's not even an instigation instigation is one aspect second thing is it is giving you reasons to motivate you to perform that action which is a prohibited action and then what happens you fall prey to your mind why 
because you did not have your self control in place you did not use some of these weapons which is very very important and at that point in time when you have been given a warning you know don't do this otherwise you will end up facing the repercussions and then what happens you will be filled with indignation and then you are actually going to end up doing that action and then you will be saying oh i don't care who cares ah oh, i i can handle anything this is not wrong i am perfectly fine then you know what it's it is like saying if i commit if i murder one person or 100 persons it's the same punishment so how does it matter so then you become indignant towards that particular act itself and you're not even feeling sorry about performing that action and you're ready to perform more this is what happens to human beings please remember we say no why somebody behaves so badly they, their senses their mind and uh, uh, their entire body is overtaken by this evil now if you ask where is the mind the mind is not in one one particular location of your body it is from head to toe so everything is going to act in that capacity it's all your you know whole body your senses your mind is all channeled towards that one action which is a wrong action or a prohibited action but to you it doesn't appear as prohibited or a wrong action why because you have been overtaken by these demons not just one demon i'm saying demons hosts of demons everybody is acting in that direction they are pushing you towards committing more and more sin so this is the truth you want you have to understand how to recognize when these things happen within you you know loss of reason comes in a human being when the evil takes over our entire being we can't see anything right in the world at all even when you know your teacher or whoever is trying to make sense to you by telling no what you're doing is wrong you're you know your listening is shut at that time you don't even want to forget about listening you don't even want to hear you're not even going to pay attention you're not going to reason you're going to be completely illogical unreasonable and irrational in life and what strikes you is called delusion and that delusion is very difficult to overcome and that is called maya the veil of maya you can't see the truth you can't see anything around you which will actually take you ahead on the path or in the right direction on the contrary every one every step that you take is going to put you backward and backward and backward you will be committing so many more sins you are falling in that gutter you are actually going in the deepest of the hell which you don't know this is what the mind does that is why my guru ji teaches that we have to always be our good self we have to take the name of the divine lord constantly chant his name when we work also we have to only take his name and do the work we should not think about anything else we have to be focused in doing a good job being our good self and being nice to everybody that is why you know in bhagavad gita chapter 16 verse 1 2 and 3 talks about divine this endowments in a human being what are the divine qualities we have to have the first word describes absolute fearlessness we don't have to fear anything in our world we have to always be you know very good in what we do we have to when we are following the path of truth there is nothing to fear not even any of this evil you know why because the divine lord is on your side when pandavas and kauravas are fighting the mahabharat krishna was not on kauravas side he was with the pandavas though their army was small but please remember they had divine lord and his army he himself alone is equal unto i don't know it is you can't describe it is indescribable equal unto more greater army than what kauravas had though lord shri krishna himself never physically fought the battle but his grace is good enough he is with you he is the charioteer of your life he is taking you in the right direction that is what you need to know so please recognize how this works within us and outside as well so whenever you are facing any such situation remember this knowledge call upon this divine being always chant the name of the lord and you know the evil will be destroyed but you have to put your effort the god himself is not going to come and do anything for you see he is mere a witness 
the one who performs the action is called the power potency of the divine lord she she is also represented as shakti it is she who has to fight the battle so the power potency within us is the one which is going to fight it so you have to do so the doership rests with us alone not with anybody else got it so let us continue then in the beginning itself their fury roused the enemies of the immortal immortal showered on the goddess volleys of arrows lances and double edged swords and she cut asunder playfully with her powerful arrows released from her full drawn bow the arrows the spears the lances and the hatchets aimed at her then in front of him kali roamed about tearing the foes with the fall of her spear and smashing them with her skull topped staff brahmani at whom so ever she rushed she made them she made those enemies lose their strength and spirit by sprinkling on them the water from a water pot maheshwari with her trident vaishnavi with a discus and the infuriated kaumari with her lance slew the asuras the offspring of diti and dhanu fell on the ground in hundreds split by the stroke of aindri's thunderbolt emitting streams of blood pounded by the assailing snout of the boar formed goddess wounded in the chest by the edge of her tusk and rent by her discus they fell filling the sky and the quarters with her roar narasimhi roamed about in the battlefield devouring the other great asuras torn by her claws frustrated by the terrific loud laughter of shivaduti the asuras fell on the ground and she promptly ate them up as they fell seeing the angry host of mothers smashing the great asuras thus by various means the troops of the foes of the gods took to their heels let me explain a little bit here what does it mean to say frustrated by the terrific no um yeah frustrated by the terrific loud laughter of shivaduti the asuras fell on the ground and she promptly ate them up what does that mean she promptly ate them up isn't it sound very gross so you might ask a question how do i eat up these evil you know it's a it's a very important valid question because we are now talking about how does these power represent with us when you when we say she promptly ate them up means um i'll give a simple example when when you are angry right you if you're angry with someone and you're very infuriated you know you are actually going to spew venom and when you talk bad about that person and you you might even you know abuse say some bad words call names lot of these things happen but not to do that is what you have to eat eat up eat means you have to control you should not even allow those words to come out so you you just have to swallow your own that anger you know we say pride you have to swallow your own pride we say but it is not first of all it you should never let it come out that's that's the whole point and when you know even before these words come out of your mouth make a terrible effort i wouldn't say terrible are do us effort you have to make so much of effort in not allowing those words to spill out of your mouth that is what means you have to eat them up so ka you know here um shivaduti she just eats them up promptly ate them up and likewise you will know how kali also drinks the blood and she chews what does it mean you don't first let the demon come out itself because if you let one demon come out they are going to give rise to 100 other demons they keep coming in hosts of them and those are your thoughts if one you know if you don't control that first thought or whatever the thoughts are coming and you keep dwelling on it it multiplies right likewise the hosts of asuras so the evil multiplies in capacity see the goodness is very limited if you see the gods are in, you know limited in, i wouldn't say limited in quantity but gods are not like the demons they are you know they try to put effort but they are not able to fight that is why now durgama has to be brought in to the picture right so please understand the way to control is don't allow your you know whatever your mind is saying to speak at that moment and that's a first sadhana that's a first weapon don't open your mouth and that is why my guru ji teaches you know he'll tell silence many a time when you're angry don't speak 
because you don't want to say things. Whatever you say is what is instigated by these demons within us, which many a time we don't mean at all. So that is why we need to control ourselves and, and refrain from saying those words. Number two is, you know, don't speak when you're angry. Silence is the mantra which we all have to follow and learn to shut up. Shutting up is very, very critical. But don't keep in your mind and dwell. You know why? Because that is going to harm you internally as well. Seeing the angry host of mothers smashing the great Asuras, thus by various means, the troops of, of the foes of the gods took to their heels. Noticing that the Asuras assailed by the hosts of mothers were intent on running away, the great Asura, Rakta Bija, enraged, came forward to fight. So there's a new name introduced. He's called what? Rakta Bija. Let us understand who is he? Soon to come, okay? What does he represent within us? No sooner a drop of blood falls from his body on the ground than a great Asura of his size springs forth on the earth. Wow! With mace in hand, the great Asura combated with Indra's force. Then Aindri struck Rakta Bija with her thunderbolt. Struck by the thunderbolt, blood from him soon flowed out in abundance. From that sprang up warriors of his stature and of his might. As many drops of blood fell from his body, so many men were born of his valor, strength and prowess. Oh my god, that's so scary and dangerous. And those men born out of blood fought with the mothers more terribly, hurling fierce weapons. Again, when his head was hurt with the fall of the thunderbolt, the blood flowed and from that men were born in thousands. In the battle, Vaishnavi struck him with the discus. Aindri hit the lord of the Asuras with a mace. The world was pervaded by thousands of great Asura of, of his size. When they were born from the stream of blood flowing out of the cut inflicted by Vaishnavi's discus, Kaumari struck him with her lance and Varahi with a sword. Maheshwari assaulted the great Asura Rakta Bija with her trident. The great Asura Rakta Bija too, filled with anger, struck the mothers with his mace individually and severely. severely. Struck various, variously by lances, spears and other weapons. Whenever the stream of blood fell on the ground, then from there sprung up Asuras in hundreds. The entire world was pervaded by the Asuras born out of the Asuras blood. But by that, the gods became very much frightened. Even the gods get frightened. How funny, right? Seeing the gods dejected, Chandika laughed and soon said to Kali, O Chamunda, keep your mouth wide open. And with this mouth quickly, take in the drops of blood generated by the fall of my weapons and the great Asuras generated out of the drops of blood. Roam about in the battlefield, devouring the great Asuras born out of him. Thus, this Asura will perish, losing all his blood. So do you see how there is a method to destroy every demon? Now here, they didn't even know what to do. What happened? From Rakta Bija, when they tried to kill him from his blood, one drop of blood was born, one great Asura of his strength, might and prowess. And likewise, when the stream of blood flowed from his body, so many different Asuras were born. Wow! What does that tell you? Something very interesting. Let me explain soon. Having directed her thus, the goddess then struck him with a spear. Kali caught in her mouth the blood of Rakta Bija. Then he struck Chandika with his mace. But the stroke of maize did not cause a pain in the, in the least. On the other hand, blood flowed copiously from the stricken parts of his body and whenever it flowed, Chamunda took it in with her mouth. And whoever were the Asuras born out of the blood taken in her mouth, Chamunda ate them up and went on drinking his blood. The goddess smote Rakta Bija whose blood was being drunk by Chamunda with spear. Kya ho internet, huh? hmm. Hmm? 
फोर जी बी रन द गॉड इज स्मोट रक्त बीजा विथ हुज ब्लड वॉज बींग जॉन्क बाय चामुंडा विथ स्पियर तांडबोल्ट शाफ्ट स्वोर्ड्स एंड डबल एच स्वोर्ड्स हो द गार्डियन ऑफ द अर्थ द ग्रेट असुरा रक्त बीजा हिट ब्लाय प्लेथोरा ऑफ वेपन्स एंड डिवॉइड ऑफ ऑल ब्लड फेल ऑन द लैप ऑफ द अर्थ ओ किंग then the gods attained happiness unparalleled the host of mothers born out of them danced intoxicated with the bouts of blood that sounds gross <laughs> here ends the eighth of devi mahatmyam in markandeya purana during the period of shavarni the manu so let us understand who is rakta bija within us and what does rakta bija represent what is rakta bija represent and what is this multiplication all about rakta bija simply represents the evil thoughts within us when one evil thought come and you allow your mind to dwell on it you know thousand more thoughts come about have you ever observed yourself that one evil thought destroys your entire peace your goodness your love your well being everything is gone your whole your whole body turns becomes negative it's filled with negativity one evil thought and then when you try to destroy that one evil thought then there are other evil thoughts given birth to from one comes many because you have already started dwelling on that one evil thought oh this person is bad this person has done this this person is like this you know series and the mind brings the connections about everything past future too many things and it makes you go mad you you don't even have control over yourself and that is called rakta bija from one evil thought gives rise to multi will thoughts thousands of thoughts it's like a stream of bloods which is giving rise to another asura another asura another asura from one drop of blood comes an asura likewise one evil thought gives rise to so many more evil thoughts within us now how do you destroy them all the gods right everybody is doing what chamunda asked kali to open her mouth and drink all the blood up what does that mean that tells you that we don't have to allow these evil thoughts to even first give birth to we should destroy it right at the source itself and most important is we have to always go to the source the root cause of our miseries why is that evil thought even coming up you need to ask yourself the question where is this giving birth to you have to go at the source and destroy it you have to drink you have to devour that and please remember to fight one evil thought how many devis were fighting him so many of the devis were fighting him so what is it you have to do to destroy one evil thought you have to put 100 good thoughts in your being you have to think 100 good things you have to do 100 good deeds in your life to destroy that one evil thought itself or one evil action this is the equation one evil thought equals to 100 good thoughts otherwise you can't that is the power you have to use and that is what divinity is all about you know how difficult that is it's very easy to become evil but it is very difficult to become divine that is why my guruji will teach all of us everybody forget about even you have a guru or not the basic knowledge is you have to always be your good self goodness is what you have to nurture within you not evil not evil tendency not dwell in the negativity not dwell in the past we are always dwelling in the past or the future either we live in the past or we live in the future we are never here in the present moment or we'll be thinking about what i didn't get what has happened to me how bad my life was or we will think so oh, what is going to happen with the future we are either living in our past miseries or we are living in the uncertainties of our future why bother live in the moment live like a bird you know that is why it is very important that you should understand the beautiful lesson of the 24 principal gurus of lord datatri what is the mother nature teaches us teach us the 24 principal gurus of lord datatri are all the nature the, you know they are all different aspects of mother nature and you should listen to this beautiful teachings from guru charitra my guruji has also done a beautiful satsang 
on Guru Charitra. I have also expounded on it. You should go listen to it. Understand who these teachers are. What do they represent? Why it is being taught to us? And why we have to refrain from committing those mistakes? These examples are not just given just for the heck of it. There is truth in that. And this truth is what we have to imbibe and apply it in our life. So, to destroy one evil thought, you have to bring in 100 good thoughts in your life. That is the effort you have to put. Got it? So, let's continue the next chapter, episode 3, chapter 9. The king said, Sire, wonderful is this narration related by you, the glory of Devi's deed pertaining to slaying of Rakta Bija. I want to hear further what, a, what act did Shumba and the wrathful Nishumba do when Rakta Bija was felled? The saints said, When Rakta Bija was felled and the others killed in the battle, the Asuras, Shumba and Nishumba became exceedingly angry. Flying into a passion on seeing his great army being slaughtered, Nishumba rushed forth with the chief forces of the Asuras. In, in front of him, at his back and on his sides, great Asuras, biting their lip in rage, advanced for slaying the goddess. The great warrior, Shumba too, accompanied by his forces, arrived in fury to slay Chandika after having fought with the mothers. Then there began an intense fight between the goddess on one side and Shumba Nishumba on the other, from whom the volley of arrows was intensely fierce like pourings from two clouds. Chandika, with her shower of arrows, cut asunder their arrows and hit the lords of the Asuras on different parts of the body with a stream of weapons. Nishumba took a sharp sword and shining shield and hit the lion, the superb vehicle of the goddess on the head. When her mount was hit, the goddess soon cut asunder with a sharp-edged arrow, the superb sword and the shield figuring eight moons of Nishumba. When his sword and his shield were cut asunder, that Asura threw the lance. She cut that also into two as it came towards her with a discus. Then the Asura, Nishumba, bloated with anger, seized the spear. The goddess powered that also as it came towards her with a blow of her fist. And he whirled his mace and threw it towards Chandika. That too was reduced to ashes, split by her trident. Then the goddess struck with a volley of arrows. That strong and eminent Asura advancing towards her with a battle axe in his hand and laid him flat on the ground. When his brother Nishumba of terrible prowess was thus laid flat on the ground, Shumba, exceedingly angry, went out to slay Ambika. Standing in his chariot and pervading the entire sky with his incomparable lofty eight arms holding excellent weapons he shone. Seeing him advancing, the goddess blew the conch and made a twang with her bowstring, which, which was simply unbearable. She filled the quarters with the sound of a bell and that rang the death knell to the splendor of all the hosts of Asuras. Then the lion filled the sky, the earth and the ten quarters with its slow, sorry, with its loud roars, making the elephants there abandon their wild trot. Thereupon Kali jumped and slapped the sky and the earth with both her hands. In that sound, all the previous sounds were submerged. Shivaduti began her thundering in auspicious laughter. By these sounds, the Asuras were terrified. Shumba became exceedingly angry. No sooner the mother exclaimed, Stand fast, O wicked one, than the god stationed in the sky proclaimed, Victory to thee. The lance, flaming fiercely, hurled by the advancing Shumba, was coming like a mount of fire. It prevented by a big fire brand. It was. The space between the three worlds was pervaded by Shumba's war cry. O Lord of Earth, the dreadful, the dreadful thunderstroke overpowered it. In hundreds and thousands, they cut with their fierce arrows those of the opponent, the goddess cutting the arrows hurled by Shumba and Shumba cutting the arrows released by her. 
Then the enraged Kali, sorry, Chandika, struck him with the spear. Hit by that, he fell swooning to the ground. Then Nishumba regaining consciousness. Do you understand? They don't die. Nish, then Nishumba regaining consciousness took his bow and smote with his arrow the goddess Kali and the lion. Again, the lord of the Asura, son of Diti, creating for himself 10,000 arms, covered Chandika with 10,000 discuses. Then the goddess Durga, the destroyer of pains and perils, became angry and cut asunder those discuses and those arrows with her own arrows. Then Nishumba, accompanied by the army of Asuras, swiftly taking his mace, rushed forward to kill Chandika. As he was rushing, Chandika with a sharp-edged sword broke the mace to pieces and he seized the spear. Chandika smote in the heart with a spear, hurled with speed. Nishumba, the afflictor of the gods, was coming towards her with a spear in hand. From his heart, pierced by the spear, emerged another person of great strength and of valor, exclaiming, Stop! As he emerged, the goddess laughed noisily and cut off his head with her sword, so he fell to ground. Then the lion ground the necks of Asuras with his fierce teeth and ate them up. Likewise, Kali and Shivduti ate the others. Certain great Asuras perished, pierced by the lance of Kaumari. Others were repulsed by the water sanctified by the mantra of Brahmini. Some others were cut asunder by the trident of Maheshwari and fell. Certain Asuras were smashed to powder on the ground by the assault of Varahi's note. The Asuras were cut into bits and pieces by the discus of Vaishnavi. Similarly, others were dealt by the thunderbolt released from the forepart four part of Aindri's hand. Some Asuras perished, some fled from the great battle. Others were devoured by Kali, Shivaduti and Lord of Animals. So with that, we end the chapter 9. But the chap we will be continuing to unravel who is this Shumba and Nishumba represent within us. Why is there so many devis with so many uh, you know, weapons, the Ashtra Shastras, they have to use to kill these demons. And do you see how they act within you? It's very easy to become an evil person, but it is very difficult to be the divine being. Devi Mahatmyam represents the glory of the Divine Mother. You are the Devi. To realize your glories, you need to first overcome these demons. You have to fight them in the battle, destroy them to understand that you are the Divine. You know, you are the Divine Mother. You are none other than her alone. So tomorrow, I will explain who is Shumba and Nishumba and what do they represent within us. With this, we end the Devi Mahatmyam, episode 3, chapter 8 and 9 here. Here ends the ninth of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana during the period of Shavarni, the Manu. Thank you once again for joining the Devi Mahatmya Parayan. Wishing you all a very happy Navratri. Om Shri Mahaganapate Namaha, Om Shri Gurudev Datta, Om Shri Sachidananda Sadguru, Sainath Maharaj Ki Jai, Om Namo Bhagavade Vasudevaya, Digambara Digambara, Shri Pad Vallabha Digambara, Om Shri Krishna Guru Nathanata, Shri Gurve Namaha, Om Devi Durugaya Namaha, Om Shri Krishna Arpanam Namastu, Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru.